Thank you. And I, Mr. Speaker, I rise in opposition to H.R. 514, which would extend for one year sweeping governmental intrusions into our lives and privacy that were authorized by the USA Patriot Act and the 2004 Intelligence Act. Without meaningful oversight demonstrating that these extraordinary powers are needed, we should not extend these uh, provisions for one full year or for any period of time for that matter, and I therefore oppose the bill. I'm opposed not simply because I'm opposed uh, because I simply do not accept the argument that in order to be safe, we necessarily have to sacrifice our rights and freedoms. I agree with Benjamin Franklin, who stated during the formation of our nation that they who give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Uh, one of the provisions the bill reauthorizes is Section 215 of the Patriot Act. It gives the government power to secretly invade our private records, such as books we read at the library, by merely alleging that they are relevant to a terrorism investigation, but without having to show that the seized material is in connection with any specific suspected terrorist or terrorist activities. There is no requirement to show probable cause or even reasonable suspicion of being related to a specific act of terrorism, and therefore there's no meaningful standard to judge whether or not the material is in fact necessary. Another provision of H.R. 514 is Section 206 of the Patriot Act, which is referred to as a roving John Doe wiretap provision. It gives the government the power to wiretap a phone conversation without having to show which phone will be used or even who will be using it and without requiring a court order for the specific roving tap. Third provision is Section uh, 6001 of the Intelligence Reform and Terrorism Prevention Act of 2004, referred to as the Lone Wolf Provision. It gives the government the power to spy on individuals in the United States who are not U.S. citizens or permanent uh, resident aliens, even though they are not agents of a foreign government or any terrorist organization. Unfortunately, this means that uh, if those targeted have any, action, any, any interaction with an American citizen, then that U.S. citizen is spied upon as well. We already allow spying on such non-citizens outside of the United States, or even in the United States where there is probable cause that they are agents of a foreign government or members of a terrorist organization, but this is an extension of that power which could envelop anybody simply as a result of the occasion of interacting with a targeted person even while we're in the United States. The third three provisions give the, give the government power to invade our privacy even when there is no probable cause nor even reasonable suspicion or credible evidence of any wrongdoing and without alleging and, and without allowing the kind of detached oversight such Gentleman's as a time court, uh, court uh, warrant which is generally called upon when such power over individuals is extended. We need, could I get 30, 30 additional seconds? Of course. Thank you. Um, uh, <clears throat> absent these oversight protections, even after the fact, in the case of emergencies, all three provisions should be allowed to expire unless we demonstrate in hearings and oversight hearings that these powers are, are uh, necessary and narrowly tailored to uh, achieve a compelling national security interest. Freedoms and protections these provisions take away are the very core of our values and liberties, and so these protections should not be legislated away without rigorous oversights to protect against abuse. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back.